All right, our first item up is an appeal review, and I think Ryan has this one. I do, thank you very much. Um, this site is located at the southwest corner of Ferris Road and Prince Street. Um, it has received a conditional use approval for an eating place with the drive through service and food store. Um, the reason we're here tonight is per city code, there was a requirement for cross access between uh, properties. So the property to the west and their plans have provided cross access to this property. What the applicant uh, is requesting is that the city waive the cross access requirements as laid out in the C uh, Conway Zoning Code. Um, and they can explain their reasonings for this um, here in a little bit. Uh, the way the code reads is all parking lots for non-residential properties shall have at least one vehicular connection to all adjacent properties. The reason for uh, cross access is it provides uh, ingress, egress to multiple sites. It allows motorists the ability to move between developments without using the roadway, ultimately decreasing traffic congest congestion on Prince Street and Ferris Road. Uh, the former planning director reviewed this um, initial re exception request and denied it, um, stating that he believes that there should be cross access between these two properties. Um, we would move to uphold um, his recommendation to deny the request as it does not meet the standards found in section 1007.4 of the Conway Zoning Code. Is there any questions at this time? Thank you, Good, Ryan. Thank you. Is the applicant present? Yes, we're here. Thank you. Frank Shaw, 13, uh, 15 Main Street for Brahms. And from Brahms, we have Cody Foran and Helen Passione and David Elrod, who put this transaction together. So the reason we're here is I've not ever been here for this reason. I've never had to re, uh, appeal a site development review. I want to remind you, you all have voted unanimously to give the conditional use. The council voted unanimously to give the conditional use. But the reason we're still back with the planning commission is that the site development plan review, which we anticipated or knew was going to be denied, we couldn't take it up on the front end. So they have now gone through this process. This will be the third time on the third location, well, second location, third time. And so the time and money expended to get here They've done on faith that we might could get this done, perhaps, with your vote. If you don't, this deal is gone. They first tried to put it on Hogan, at Hogan and Prince location, but because of traffic issues, they pulled that. And then after Whataburger was denied here, then with a 24-hour service. We're not 24 hours. We're just the daytime service and into the evening. You know, the hours will probably be determined by the season, depending on summer, it might be open. A little longer. Then we came back to, they came back before I was involved, to this same location on Ferris Road, and then they abandoned that site because of this very point we're here on, this cross access agreement. And I'll just say this that, and, and they'll support me on this. I visited with Helen one day on the phone, she's in the audience, and Cody, and I, I said, Will you please talk to your to the owners, Mr. Brom, it's family owned, they have 309 locations. And I said, would you please give us one more chance because the city of Conway is going to get a reputation, we have it somewhat, of not wanting products like Brahms here because of our arduous process to get things passed. And that's not, that's not, a, um, that's not being cutting to you, it's our procedures. There's nobody, I mean, the procedures are written, we have to go by them and we're following them while we're here, but the procedures and processes here are more difficult than any other city in these 309 cities that they've been to, except Dallas. That's where we are as a city. So I am preaching as well as proposing this project. We're, we're, we're trying to grow, and growth is not in our DNA because of our procedures and our policies, which um, you know, I understand why Chris wrote his letter. I understand why the Planning Commission has said what they said. But this has already been announced in the newspaper. Brahms is coming. It's been on TV. They have TVs here. We have cameras in here the last time. Everybody says, well, great. But the procedures won't let us do it without your vote tonight. 
So this deal, I'm telling you, right on the money, was dead. And because Mr. Elrod, David, and I convinced them to give it one more try, we're back. Now, you may well vote against it tonight. I, I would respect your vote, and I might be disappointed in it, but I will respect your vote however you vote. But this deal was dead and gone, and Brahms was never going to come back here, not after two um, abandoned attempts. And so we're back on the same location. This is, I'm going to address some specific issues now after I've told you the background of it. On the staff report, there are a few things that we need to cover right here, and then I'm going to turn it over to Cody for questions because he has all of those answers. This was on the, uh, on the side data. It says conditional use eating place with drive food through uh, and food service requested use. We already have that use. We've been to you. Then we had to take it to council before we could come to this point. So they've had to renew their contracts with the sellers. The sellers, you know, I mean, it's a hassle for them to renew contracts. You know, Lori, how that works. You don't know that you're going to get it back, but we have a little more time to get this deal perked and running. There's no better place in Conway for Brahms than right there, and there's no better location, there's no better there's no better purpose for this location than ice cream on that corner. But if we have to do the cross access to Don Pepe's, um, this deal was dead. And I had pulled it out of the fire, the fat out of the fire, if you will, and they're back. So I don't know what will happen if you deny it now, but I know it was gone. I know that for sure, and I can tell you more about it, but I don't want to right now. So... The cross access agreement. If you could, could we go back to that big schematic? Thank you, Lauren. Of and and if you'll look at Don Pepe's to the left, you know what's to the left or the west of Don Pepe's? Well, that's Shadrach's Coffee, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see a cross collateral access agreement from Don Pepe's to Shadrach's? You don't because there isn't one. So we have an inconsistent application of our zoning rules to this very exact same piece of property. Shadrachs and Don Pepe's weren't required to have cross-collateral access agreements. There is none. But we're required to. And it's going to come out on Ferris Road about, well, you can see, what, a few hundred feet from the roundabout? So everybody in south of Prince Street is going to use that. And we have two, they're going to come in that way. They're not going to go the roundabout, the morning side, and come back. They'll cut across. And what that does for Brahms, it creates a liability issue. If there's a wreck there, a fender bender, they're going to get sued. It creates a maintenance issue because the garbage trucks, the food service trucks, everybody will come in that way. And everybody that lives south of Prince will come that direction. It will create a traffic jam coming in and out. It's going to put, see, we have two lanes of traffic kind of like Chick-fil-A coming around the building for service. Then they want to put a 40 or 50 foot easement, depends on which one you look at, Behind the two lanes of traffic, you see the green buffer? It'll take the green buffer area out. The, the family that lives just south of us came and spoke and spoke for us, if you remember. He got up on the against, but by the time he was done, he said, yeah, I think ice cream would be good. Mr. McDougal is the only person who spoke. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't want that. I'm speaking for him now. He doesn't want that access agreement because it put all the traffic right there by his house. And it will do away, I'm going to let Cody talk about that, it will do away with the buffer zone because you can't have that in the traffic entrance there both. So you can see on there how many people will, I mean, you can't see how many, but you can see that the people will use that way to get to non pay pays. And they have other out parcels. It's not just their restaurant. If you'll look, they have lot two, there's a lot three, and then there's a lot four. They have more development coming. They have an approved ingress and egress to Prince, whether they get this or not. But I can tell you, they're not going to get access across us because we're not going to build it unless we don't have that access. That's where we are. It's not going to happen. I mean, it's just not going to happen. We're not going to do it because of the liability issues, the traffic issues. You know, Brahms serves everybody, but can, can you imagine, or I'll say I can imagine, I have five grandchildren, make it six, four and under. I don't want to go through that line and get out and park with all that ingress and egress going to Don Pepe's and their place. We're not against them, but they have access. I don't want to take my kids there and face that with six four-year-olds. I'm not going to do it, four and under. I mean, it just is a turnoff. But it won't matter what I want to do because it won't be built. So 
Unfortunately, the fact that we've been through y'all two or three times, mm -hmm. been to the council already and back, it still falls on your shoulder to either vote for this or not. We have the reputation um, among residential developers, that's me, and among commercial developers that we're hard to deal with. This is an opportunity to turn that tide, and that's why I took the case. That's why I'm here, is I love Conway, and I've been here forever. I don't want to see that. I'd like to see us grow, grow, and grow, but we're hard to work with. And it's not anybody's fault. It's our procedures are so tied up in knots. They go other places, and it's just, yes, that looks good sign here, and it's done. We don't do that. We need a general overhaul of our residential development and our commercial development standards. We almost lost the Mallee Crossing out there because of exterior brick. How much do we need? Well, a lot. Apparently, that code hadn't been revised since 2020. There are a lot of new materials on the market, just to give an example. So I'm asking you on behalf of my friends in Conway, I, everybody wants this. You know, everybody wants it. Most people think we already have it, but we don't. It's not going to happen unless you vote for us tonight. So having said that, I'm going to let Cody talk about other things related to engineering and lay, uh, how it lays on the ground. Go ahead, Cody Foran from Prom. I'll be right here. Good evening, everyone. I'd say a lot of the inconsistency we're seeing is, is in this development alone. The plat for the Del Car is platted at a 40-foot access easement that is 10 foot off of a residential zoning. We were told we have to have a 20-foot buffer zone. Because, green part on the bottom to help. because of the residential zoning to the south. So even if during the SDR they were required to have a buffer, that access is still granted either way. You look at the site plan, it, it's just inconsistent. That was approved by the, the city. That shows a 50-foot access easement right on top of the line. That's for the residential property to the south. It's, it's just inconsistent. I, mean, I can go on, but... If there's any questions, I'd, I'd like to stick to what you all would like to hear. I can ramble for a while. I'll say something. First yes, of all, I'm sorry for your frustration and the time that has been involved. Because I, too, thought this was settled. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do have an issue, and I guess this could be a staff question or maybe to you, but what is the purpose of, in such a short distance of coming off that roundabout, you are going to back traffic up all the way into Prince Street, by having people turn in to there on Ferris. So I guess my question is to, to have a cut through all the way through to two businesses that are already there that you can't cut through to. One, you can't. Two, you can't. So whatever goes on the other side, you can't go through because you've already got one that's blocking it. So we've dealt with this before with a residential subdivision where some things were already done with sidewalks where you couldn't, so to me, this, and I'm just going to give my opinion, I think this is a mess up, however it should have been. I don't want to lose a business in Conway again over something that, to me, that, that just doesn't make sense. And we also told the neighbor that there would be a buffer there. And if that goes away, we've gone against what we said we would do. So I, I'm not in agreement with um, the request provide the cross access. That's just my opinion. Thank you, Lori. Does anybody have any, I'm sorry, can you tell me your name again, sir? It's Cody Foria. Thank you, Cody. Does anybody else have any questions for Cody at all? I guess I'll just ask, is this a deal killer? I mean, I think that's what Mr. Shaw alluded to, but. I don't personally have the authority to tell you that. Okay. My name's not an owner of the sure. company but <laughs> but I can I can tell you for sure I was we were given the order to walk away from the site and before Mr. Elrod and uh, Mr. Shaw pulled a miracle out for us to come back to the table now I think it's fair to say that since that point and we were we walked through the SDR process because that's absolutely the process we have to go through to uh, to determine these next items we've spent considerable money considerable money on engineering I would say, honestly, more than I've spent on due diligence on real estate sites. Usually we get through the city, we go through a, a minor site plan review process, get an okay, say, okay, you know, that generally looks good. Maybe there's a few items to work out during the building permit phase, and that's fair. Um, but, but in this case, I have a 95% completed civil set. 
I mean, in two weeks, I could have a 100% completed civil set ready for building permit review. Again, farther than I usually take any site before we even purchase the property. If we were purchase the property, that'd be one thing. We haven't even completed the due diligence yet. This is literally trying to make sure we can absolutely buy the property and make it work for our usage. All right. Thank you, Cody. Appreciate it. You want to hang out in the, they call that the batter's box. If, if you don't mind, if you just hang out in the front yep. so we can ask some questions yep. if we have any more. Is there anybody else to speak in favor of this item? Is there any other public comment at all concerning this item? Yes. So please come up and state your name and your address, please. Good evening. My name is Greg Long with Craft and Tull. We're the engineers who worked on the Don Pepe site. We're here on behalf of Address, our please, sir. Address. We need your address, address is Crafton Tull, 65 Bradley Cove Road, Russellville, Arkansas. Thank you. Go ahead. So, uh, number one, I'm, I'm not opposed to Brahms. We, uh, I spend a lot of time in Oklahoma and eat at a lot of Brahms, so I, I'm excited that they're wanting to come to Conway. Second thing I want to say is that uh, I disagree with uh, the statement that was made that Conway is the most difficult city to deal with. I, I deal with a lot of cities in Arkansas and Oklahoma, and I can promise you, I trade all of my projects for a project in Conway because uh, of the staff and, and the way the procedures, and I don't find them um, encumbering at all. Uh, so I appreciate uh, the staff. So we've got a site plan that's been previously approved and is under construction. We've already put curb and gutter down uh, to make this cross connection. We in our pre-development design meetings with the city, went back and forth about the requirements. Um, we originally wanted two accesses off of Prince Street. Uh, they encouraged us to go in a different direction, so we did. And we complied with their wishes to provide cross access in, instead of the two off of Prince Street. And so that site is approved. Uh, Right, wrong, or indifference, that's what we're building off of right now. Just came by the site, coming along nicely. We have that cross access, and if this is denied, that restricts Don Pepe's to one access off of Prince Street, which is a right turn only into our site. And so that puts a lot of restriction on the traffic in and out of our development. And as has been pointed out, we it's a larger piece of property there. We do have some potential uh, retail space to still build out in the future. Um, and had we gone in a different direction and not provided this cross access, which we think is a good idea, but if we did not have to do that, we could have exchanged that asphalt that we're putting down for more retail space. And so we don't, you know, it's a, it's a financial deal there. So. Now, if this is not upheld, the denial is not upheld, and we have this uh, no cross access, we've got a, a drive to nowhere that's already partially built that our client will have to pay out of their pocket to, uh, to remove and to, to figure out how to use that space. And so you're putting a burden back on, on our client. Um, I, I, I think this is a no-brainer. We have followed the requirements in good faith, understanding that that cross access would, would be there. And so that's where our, our client is at. And so we encourage this body to uphold uh, that denial and require this cross access. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank Any you so much. Questions for me? Question for you. <clears throat> yes, sir. From back of curb to property line, do you know how many feet that is off the top of your head? Uh, from the back of curve of the property line, I think it is 10 feet, I believe. It's 8 or 10. I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. Now, we provided, we, we showed a 50-foot, but that was not all for the, just was not all for just the cross access. There's a utility easement right. in there as well. So. so, I guess... 
you're not going to have true cross access because you can't get through the other side, right? We'll have cross access to, to one property. You know, we'll have access to Ferris Road. I suspect, I don't know this for sure, but I suspect that the creek was the reason that cross access wasn't required to the property going to Shadrack's. I don't know that for sure, but all I know is when we presented our plan and went through the redevelopment uh, consultation with the city, uh, they said this is what we needed to provide and that's what we provided in good faith. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to call this back into commission. Um, Can we respond? Uh, I've already called it back into commission, okay. sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, my mind has just went blank. Brian, will you come up? Because I do have a couple of questions for you before the other commissioners ask questions. Yes. Um, so when we were dealing with the other eating establishment that would possibly come into that space. I remember seeing the plat plans that showed um, Don Pepe's and them working in conjunction with the city for that cross access. Correct. Do you know why that hasn't occurred with this particular property? I don't. We require cross access on all um, non-residential properties. We've been up front um, with them saying that this needs to have cross access between the sides. I can't answer why it doesn't. Uh, one thing I would like to point out, um, this does not have to be a 40 or 50 foot drive. There's a 20 foot minimum drive for cross access. So even though the other one's larger, it can break down to a 20 foot drive going across and then out to Ferris. Commissioners? Questions, thoughts, and the, and the landscape buffer that they have to provide is from our conditional use permit, correct? Correct. And how much does that drive cut into that landscape barrier? It would depend where they wanted to put their drive at. We don't have any set plans where the cross access would occur right now. Um, they would just have to provide 20 feet somewhere. So 20 feet is the minimum. Um, with the cross access travel aisle, 20 foot is the minimum. So, Laura, I don't know the procedure here, but I think it would be beneficial to hear the applicant's response to some of the things we've heard, if mm -hmm. that's still doable. Yeah. I'd... Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. Cody Florian with Roms, 3000 Northeast 63rd Street, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So I would, I would put back in that, that currently there's a house sitting in the way of that cross access easement that cannot physically be extended over to the east of Ferris. Y'all vote no tonight, Roms goes away, the house still remains. They cannot have access across the house unless somebody decides to buy the house. That's, I mean, it's pure, it's pure and simple. Any other questions for Cody? No, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Any thoughts, any discussion? Yeah, I mean, so I, I'm a little confused on the whole order of operations on how we got to this point, but it seems to me we're in a situation where we're either going to, um, you know, go against uh, what we potentially you know, told Don Pepe's in their review or the um, the buffer to the, the house in the residential area. Um, and so I, again, not sure how we got to where we are, but I guess one thing that always sticks with me is consistency. And, I, you know, if, if the things in the packet and, um, you know, some of the uh, points that were made today is that this this isn't being consistently required and that has gotten us in the in the past and causes confusion and clutters things and if there's a rule that's not consistently being applied i would certainly hate to run off um a good development which obviously i think Brahms is and to attract projects like this it I, i'm i'm supportive of of um not requiring the access. 
and going against the director's decision. That's why I am as well. And I guess just one more thing to add is we're looking at a functioning business right now. Shadrax only has access to Prince Street. So, well, they're not, they can't get through this cut through to Ferris. So, but, I guess. But they are required cross access to a adjacent property. So, their cross access to the property, if you're looking at the front of them, would be to the right. Mm -hmm. So, they have the cross access there if somebody were to ever build. It would have to tie in together. So I guess the, the question that I have is, say we uphold this decision, obviously coming across to tie into the existing cross access, you would have to impede the landscape buffer. Mm -hmm. So how does that affect our CO process if we're not meeting the requirements of the conditional use permit that we've put on it? Does it have to impact the green space? Like Ron said, you know, it's a minimum 20 foot aisle cross access. We made that 20 foot cross Brahms. To me, it looks like we, we could still have the 20 foot landscape buffer. So you'd have to cut back if we're only 10 foot to back a curb on the other property. You would, and you know, 20, you'd, have, you'd have to cut a corner of it. It wouldn't be entirely, you'd have to cut back. It would be cutting a partial piece of it, but not the entire thing. But you would impede it at least slightly in a curve. They could potentially lose a couple of parking spaces. But if there's a middle ground somewhere, that might be it. So not that this impacts where I'll be on this, but what's what's next steps? Are we does it stop here? Does it go to city council? If you um, if you grant the appeal, then it's granted. If you uphold the denial of the original exception request, they do have the option to then further appeal to city council. Okay. And uh, after that, regardless, a final SDR will still come back to you guys, correct? Like this isn't correct. the end this of the road. This is part of getting SDR approval is, is the resolution of this request. Okay, correct. so regardless of where we go here, it still is coming back to you guys to approve finally. Yeah, it's, it's still in process. Yeah, yeah we're okay. yeah, still looking at it. Mm -hmm. All right, I don't know if this is a question for you or for Ryan possibly. And I hear what Adam's saying about like inconsistency type things. Um, my question, I think, comes into the legality and applying applying the rules. John Pepe's we basically forced them to do this curb and gutter and cross cut, and the with the Whataburger happening way back when, it was all being planned together, and now we're facing well, we're forcing them, but possibly looking at not forcing the the next one to do it. So what are the legality issues with that? Brian, can you? Yeah, that's probably a Charles question. <laughs> yeah. A little way so, so I just want to make a comment because um, I'm just listening and I know that we use the term consistent when it affects how we're going to vote as a body. But there are times that we have not been consistent, especially when the room has been crowded. Mm -hmm. We've gone exactly opposite of what decode or what we would say the ordinance is. So I don't know if using that as a blanket statement of let's be consistent, we have not done that. So I think we just I, need I, to consider I agree. this. I agree. We just need to consider this for what it is, either okay. we vote for it or you vote against it, but using the word consistent, I just kind of, just a comment. Yeah. I, we, we have not been consistent, so. I, I agree. I, I guess to further clarify that point, I'm, I'm saying if if this is something that's inconsistently applied, why are we going to let it scare Brahms off, which I know everybody wants? Mm -hmm. But if Don Pepe's has a cross access, so does Shadrach's next to it, the other property, per the code, they follow the code as well, I feel like we would be inconsistent and in not making it here. I, um, and and I'm, I'm excited about Brahms. I want Brahms, you know, but yeah. I think if a, a, a deal breaker is a few parking spaces in order to follow the, the rules um, that have been established and other businesses have followed, then, I mean, that's a decision that they have to choose to make. But, but I'm still, 
I don't know that we're following all of the rules because, again, I'm not clear why this wasn't already, why we're back here anyway when it's already been through city council. I'm also not clear on the 20 feet, the 40 feet, is that buffer still going to be there, which we told the public it would be? Is it all going to be there and still be able, are you talking in and out traffic right there or one-way traffic? Because you've got a double, a double line. That's, that's what I'm not figuring out where they're going to go. It's a for our Mr. Shaw, our hey, hey, Mr. Shaw, we're in, we're in commission right now. Hang on just a second. Sorry. But I guess that I'm still, what I don't want to happen is what has been said tonight and what we've heard before. Money has been spent. Time has been spent. Engineering has been spent. Redesigning has been spent. Um, time. And, and I'm still not, I see, I can think Chick-fil-A. Two lanes are coming in there. And then you're going to have two, I mean, just look at that. Then you have two lanes coming in off of a busy street. It, it doesn't make sense to me with the issues we heard about the roundabout and the clogging that up and all of that. So I guess I'm just still confused. I don't have. And maybe it's a location because it's on that corner. Right. That may be what mm -hmm. makes it a little different than the other ones. Because of that corner and then being the roundabout right there. I understand your, your thoughts on, hey, money's been spent, but the ordinance was in effect prior. But why it wasn't it money. communicated to the applicant early? It was. It's, it's in the, it's yeah. in the code. But as you go to do the development. If you'll recall, the applicant actually submitted, this is an exception request specific to development regulation. It's not a variance or a waiver or anything else. If you'll recall, they actually submitted this very request with their conditional use permit. However, the code states that an exception request to any part of Article 10 must accompany a site development review application. So they really couldn't even bring this request until they submitted for site development review. Yeah, and maybe. Which we communicated that very clearly. And so they just then, weren't to that process yet. Then, uh, if that's the case, then, and I, and I know that I get confused on what's put in this packet, what's been vetted by staff, and what hasn't. But What's the explanation for the examples in here that are pointed out where this wasn't required? Which examples do you mean? They gave some in, in the packet. Okay, so, so if the you'll slim look, chickens over that, that's one right. of them that they put in. If okay. you'll look at at the slim chickens example, the approved site plan for slim chickens is directly across the page. Slim chickens does provide cross access to the north and to the south. They are stubbed out both directions with pictures from the site, but please remember Slim Chickens was developed after both adjoining properties were developed. In the future, if those are altered or redeveloped, that cross access will be connected. So it's sitting there ready to go. The Lowe's and the medical office building that are the other example were both developed prior to the adoption of the requirement for the cross access. So they were developed prior to 2002. And the so the development over on Dave Ward, where Andy's is, Taco Bell, and all that, that all has the same sort of style of cross-access, which we were discussing here tonight, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But like Starbucks doesn't go all the way through. Starbucks has cross-access to... It goes, through, cross the it goes the through the other way, but not to I connect. I do think to, there is a, a topographical constraint there. If you there's, look, there's a, a big drop-off there. Well, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. But they so do have cross-access to for security. Yeah. 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 Right, which is the nightmare getting in and out of And the other business. <laughs> so it's Slim's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Slim's needs to cross Yeah. Yeah. So, Laura, I mean, the, the question you raised that we don't have an answer to, which I wish we did, is a good one and a fair one. But my bottom line is to attract developments like this that we want as a city, we need to work with applicants, and I'm not going to vote to stand in the way of getting Brahms. So that, that's going to be my bottom line. Mm -hmm. But I would, I would love to hear the answer to your question. Um, Brian, we obviously have a lot of thoughts on opposite sides here. Is there anything else that the city can provide as they're weighing out this decision? No, I mean, it's, it's a part of the code. We applied it every site. Now, on the Shadrachs, we should have had them stubbed out to the other side also. That was a mistake on staff's part. Um, when that property beside them develops, we will try to go back and have Shatterax make that connection so that we, we connect the entire block. 
Um, the western the, portion of the Don Pepe site hasn't been reviewed correct. yet. Correct. They'll have to stub out um, towards Shadrax when they develop that portion of the site. Um, we're just following code. I mean, cross access is something you see in most cities. So, Do you know why it wasn't with Shadrax? It was just a mistake on whoever reviewed it. The fact that this is in front of us, right, means that there is some process to get this waived, right? I mean, and that was the decision that Chris made and said, no, we're not going to do that. Correct. The applicant yes. is following an available appeal process as a result right. of that exception. So that, to me, answers some of your questions, Laura, that this is, an, this is part of the process and I mean, this is a decision think, that we can make. I don't think that, I'm not against one. I was just bringing up the consistency. Mm -hmm. Like I don't want it to seem like, hey, she's going to vote against this. That that wasn't my plan at all. I'm just saying that exactly like you said, there is an appeal process. So just saying we're going to be consistent. I just think that that's we're either mm -hmm. allowing the appeal and we vote for it or against it. But I'm just just saying consistent. We've not been consistent regardless of what the, if it's a commercial business or a residential. That's all I was, that was my point. I like Brahms. I was planning on voting so that they can still come, just to make that clear. But if we're gonna use the broad umbrella of consistency, then what you said is exactly what I was trying to say. There is an appeal process and they're here, but if we're gonna be consistent, we do need to start trying to do that. No, I, I'm, my, I don't disagree with anything you said, Letitia. I think we will continue to run into these types of concerns based on the fact that we're not a new planned city, right? Like, there's always going to be some old example that requires the review of exception, which is why we're here. Mm -hmm. I think where I am struggling, um, and I have become very fond of Brahms over the last couple of months in my travels to Northwest Arkansas, um, I think where I am struggling is everybody wants this great product to come in, but I also don't want to discredit the small business that's right beside them, and all of a sudden they're not as important because they're not as big of a deal as Brahms or something like that. Like they are spending the money in our city just like this new entity coming in, and I don't want to discredit. They have followed to the letter of the law what, what the city has asked them to do, and I don't want to hurt their business to allow another business to come in. Like, I wish there was a simple way to, to make these come together, to have an agreement of, yes, we can do this and this and everybody's happy. And it consistently feels like we're put in a position because like we faced this last time, like there's, there's inconsistencies and so it keeps landing at our lap to try to figure out of how to bring all the parties together. Anybody have any more comments or questions before we bring this into a vote? So we have to have six in favor? We have to have five. This is a majority vote. It's not a public hearing item, so it doesn't have to have quorum. Okay. Cody, did you raise your hand? I'm going to allow Mr. Go ahead and come back and address, and then we'll go to vote. From the start of this entire process, we had a completely different design that allowed traffic to come south on Ferris, take a right, and then head straight. We had a completely different drive-through layout, completely different drive-through layout. Mr. Kurt, Kurt Jones was real serious about traffic and control, congestion, and that has been a huge concern, literally from the first site we worked on at Hogan and Prince um, a couple years ago, I think, to this one. Traffic and congestion has been the biggest, and I've, I've listened to the Whataburger um, planning, planning and zoning and the city council, Traffic was brought up quite a bit, everywhere. We, we redesigned this entirely based on Mr. Jones's suggestions. Granted, this is more of a traditional layout, but we did this entirely for congestion and traffic purposes. This has got to be a safe buffer. It's got to be, it's got to, we can't have issues with congestion or else nobody's going to win here. Nobody's going to win. I think we've, it's been said before that no matter who develops this corner, you're gonna have concerns of this. So it's our job as a proposal here to really mitigate those concerns. And I think we have we have been we have done everything in our power to follow exactly what has been asked of us here uh, regarding that. 
something else I would move for is why is this such a big deal to us? We are under parked. This is not a normal amount of parks for us. We have three different usages in this building. We have a drive-through, a restaurant, and a grocery store. We have 40 or 51 parks. I think the building code requires 55. So automatically, and we're required to have a buffer or uh, a landscape island on either side of the parking rows. We're going to lose five to seven parks immediately. So if I do the math on their building correctly, I think Laura told me, Lauren told me it was 3,881 square feet, which came out to uh, 46 parks, if I'm not mistaken, for the development code, and they show a total of 56. So they're currently 10, and I'm not here to degrade anyone's whatsoever. I'm just saying in general, if it's an a impact to them, it's an even bigger impact to us because we're going to lose five to seven parks that are absolutely detriment to the success of this property, plain and simple. They have 10 more parks in there required by their square footage of the building. We have a bigger building. We also have three different usages. But this, our model is fine with the parks we have. If we lose five to seven more, it's going to significantly hurt us. And it's really going to be a madhouse when people start trying to fill the available spots. And that comes, you know, we've got 309 locations, like, like it was mentioned. We, we definitely know what our businesses need to succeed. And 51 is pushing it, honestly. 51 is, we, we usually design around 50. If we can push more, right, we can. But, I mean, this site is optimized to the maximum amount of parking I can possibly put on there. I mean, this is what, I, I draw site plans daily. And, and this, this is maximized. With the buffers that were required, with the detention that's required, and landscaping that's required on islands and everything else, I mean, if those weren't required, yeah, we could stretch it more. But... This is following every other development code to the letter. And I would love to answer any questions that anybody has to, to really clarify any point that's been said tonight. But there could be overflow parking next door if needed. Can you elaborate a little? So the property adjacent to you, you know, if Brahms parking lot was full, there's a cross access, customers could park. Next door, if, needed. if I understand cross access easements correctly, that is strictly for driving from one spot to the or from one lot to the other. Parking agreements, from my experience, are completely different. So that's kind of the point here. Is what we're saying is that it, it almost we almost feel like it's being forced upon us to to give this to um, this access, and it, it's it's just not feasible for our business for everything. We. Again, when you force the, the requirement of this, it kind of takes away, like paragraph six of my letter, it kind of takes, takes away of that agreement. Maybe that is an agreement. We give you access, maybe you, we, you know, parking or whatever, some side agreement that allows private developers to work together. At this point, it, it just feels like it's an, a negative impact to us and that we don't have that ability to work out any type of agreement with the neighbor because of, uh, and why would they? Why would, why would they want to work with us when they're, they're, they were given they were told that they could have access, but that hurts that hurts anyone here. All right, thank you, sir. Appreciate you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. I mean, we're back in commission, sir. We we. It's at her discretion. That's what y'all want. Like, I'm, I'm here to let y'all have all the information. So, come on back up, sir. This will be the last comment before we go to vote. Thank you, Greg Long with Craft and Toll, 65 Bradley Cove Road, Russellville, Arkansas, representing Don Pippies. Um, you're in a tough spot. I realize that. Um, statement was made that they have 309 locations. Don Pepe's has two. Uh, they're a lot bigger than Don Pepe's. Uh, but it, again, they, if I understood this right, they have not purchased the property. Our client has. They haven't received site development review approval. Our client has. They haven't started construction. Our client has. They're request, requesting you to set aside your ordinances. Our client didn't do that. We have, we are in construction right now based upon an approved site plan. They've said, you know, it'll 
kill the deal. It won't, it won't kill, it may kill this deal, but Brahms is a big outfit, and if they want to be in Conway, they'll find a place to make it work. I promise you that. If they can't, they need to hire an engineer like Kraft and Toll, and we'll help them make it work. So, <laughs> okay, we don't need that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so don't, don't bow to the scare tactics. Brahms is coming. They'll be here. It's too good of a market for Brahms not to be here. They'll find a place for it to work. We're just asking for consideration of the money that we have already spent construction underway based upon an approved site plan and promises that the city made to us. Thank you. Do, Thank so, you, can I have a follow-up question? Yep. Do, do you have like a, a way to quantify what that would be? Not right now. I couldn't come up with that. As far as a monetary value, I can't right now. I'm just trying to yeah. gauge the magnitude, but okay, that's, yeah. that's I mean, fair. I, I get it. Yeah. Significant amount of money that we've spent. All right. Fair Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? So, in order for this to pass, we have to have at least five. Um, Yes votes. Yeah, yeah, we'll do it. Don't we have? We need a we need a motion, motion first. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to make the motion. I'm I'll, I'll be voting no, but I'll make the motion in the affirmative. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, Who had the second? Motion. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Let me get through. All right. And, and the motion is to uphold it, correct? Right. I the move motion. to uphold staff recommendation. Yeah. So. To be clear, a vote yes would uphold the denial, a vote no vote to grant the exception and allow them to proceed as requested. Everybody agrees? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So can I be clear? A no vote is for Brown, a yes vote is against Brown. Is that correct? Yes, correct. that's correct. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. It's the confusing. We get confused too. <laughs> Talk property here. Yes, not yeah. against Brahms. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the cross access. We're talking property, not businesses. Okay. So we have a motion from Adam and a second from Mark, mm -hmm. and we'll do a uh, we'll do a roll call. Yes. You want me to do this, right? Yes, please. Okay, great. Or do you need me to do it so you can? Nope, drive? I'm good. Uh, Laura. I need to. I'm the weighing vote. If sorry, you're does. correct. Uh, Alexander. Yes. Adam. No. Mark? Yes. Letitia? No. Lori? No. Ethan? Yes. Jensen? No. I am a no. That leaves us at five no's and three yeses. So I don't believe you have to vote. Do you agree, Beth? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> please vote. <laughs> I would be a yes. All right, so that's, give me a second, one, two, three, four yeses, one, two, three, four, five noes. So by that right, the was granted, yes? We all agree? Procedurally, you good, Lauren? Okay. 